ooh, ooh, look at this, I see something up here. Yes, glow worms. The entire ceiling is covered. There are so many worms, it's like looking at the stars. This is an advertisement for DreamWorks Animation. There are few places on this planet more magical than the island country of New Zealand. Its coastlines are pristine, edged with crashing waves and volcanic black sand. Its interior is visually stunning and seems as if it were painted with an artist's free-flowing brush as its rolling hills naturally dip and disappear into winding valleys that have been carved over millions of years by the ever-flowing rivers and magnificent waterfalls. So I think it's pretty clear to see why the Brave Wilderness team targeted this location as the perfect hidden island backdrop for a project centered around the newest How to Train Your Dragon film. This trilogy is one of my all-time favorites set mainly on a remote island within the Viking village of Berk, and it centers around the idea of humans living, eventually befriending, and ultimately thriving alongside dragons. And while it's fair to admit that we did choose New Zealand based on its visual and thematic similarities to Berk, it's actually the home of real-life dragons. See that? It's a Tuatara a reptile that has been on our planet for over 225 million years. But we're going to save that for another episode. Today, the team and I are in Waitomo, and we will be going beyond the beauty of the island's exterior to travel deep into its underbelly as we search for one of its most primitive, yet brilliantly bioluminescent creatures, the glowworm. All right, guys, this is it, our official point of descent. It's time to enter the hidden world of glowworms. Flashlights on, here we go. In the latest dragon installment, The Hidden World, we learn that there is a secret underground safe haven where dragons can live and fly freely. As the audience, we are introduced to this hidden world when Hiccup and Astrid are searching for the Night Fury dragon known as Toothless. If you have no idea who or what I'm talking about, then I definitely recommend you go back and watch these movies. Trust me, you will thank me later. Anyways, Hiccup and Astrid enter into a cave system that is filled with a magical glow of bioluminescence. And that is where our mission in the real world begins. Can we find the glow of bioluminescence in nature? Let's find out what's behind door number one. Wow. How far Look down does that. that go? This is cool. It's an entire spiral way that goes all the way down to the bottom as we start our entry into the cave system. With flashlight beams illuminating the way, we slowly began to descend into the darkness. And while I wish I could have flown in on a dragon, the entry on foot into the Waitomo cave system is still pretty epic in its own right. Nearly 150 feet below the surface, you find yourself at a single rock that is continuously splattered with dripping water. Traditional Maori culture suggests that before entering the caves, you cleanse your hands so as to not bring any negative energy into the underworld. Another series of steel doors are prompted open, leading you through a cylindrical passageway that finally empties you into a hidden world that is unlike anything you have ever imagined. As we slowly navigated the tunnels, our light beams brought to life an endless maze of dragon-looking structures. It was in that very moment where I was able to visualize a comparison between this living world and the hidden world of fantasy that was so brilliantly displayed in the franchise's most recent film. Look at this, it's like a sheet that just works its way oh, down the side of the cave. Look at out. this one. Looks like the wing of a dragon. Sure does. You have to wonder, did the filmmakers get inspiration 
from images like this within the caves that looks just like the wing of a dragon. And in the case of a hidden world, it would be the light fury that has a wing just like that. White, a little bit of cream colored, and uh, it doesn't bioluminesce, but it still looks pretty cool. At this point, it was impossible to tell how far beneath the Earth's surface we had traveled. It felt like miles. In our minds, it was light years. But in actuality, it was at the most a few hundred yards. The sheer expansiveness of the caverns was absolutely humbling. The natural designs of the mineral formations were mathematically impossible to comprehend, especially when your brain tried to process the idea that each and every shape took hundreds, if not thousands, of years to form. Truth be told, it was difficult to do anything other than marvel at the magnitude of it all. We really were traveling through a hidden world. Trusting our instincts, we traveled deeper into the unknown until finally, we saw a faint glimmer upon the cavern ceiling. This was it. We had reached the realm of glowworms. Ooh, ooh, look at this, I see something up here. Turn the lights on a little bit. Hey, I'll turn my lights off. Here, let me, let me flip the imprint, hang on. Yes, glowworms. Glowworms, they're everywhere, look at this. The entire ceiling is covered. There are so many worms, it's like looking at the stars. Okay, let's do this because we have some worms right in front of us here that are just the little tiny dots, but we're gonna have to go back to normal lights to actually see what the worm itself looks like. All right, I'm back. Okay, so there it is. That is a glow worm. You see all these little spindly things hanging down? Those are actually little mucus webs, like fishing lines that they use to catch their prey. And just behind the webbing, that slimy looking little creature is the glowworm. Okay, so the first thing we probably should note about glowworms is they're not actually worms at all. They're actually the larva of a fungus gnat. Okay, this is a very unique creature with a very unique life cycle. And what you're looking at here is the second phase of its life. They start as eggs, they turn into worms, then they form into a pupa, eventually hatch and turn into a gnat. So, like I said, in a sense, it's not really a worm at all. They're actually closer to, I guess you compare it to like a maggot, something that starts out in a worm type form and then turns into something with wings. But they have a very limited life cycle, only about a year in time between egg and turning into a fly. That is just such a bizarre looking little creature. And what's so unique about this is the fact that it bioluminesces, right? So it's only a very small part of the worm that actually glows. You may be asking yourself, well, what is bioluminescence? The bioluminescence is actually a chemical reaction that is happening within the worm's body. Specialized enzymes and molecules mix with oxygen, creating energy that cause the worms to glow. Now that glow specifically is helping to draw in the worm's prey. Any small insects that are flying around in this ecosystem are drawn to that light, they get stuck in the sticky webs, and then the worm reels them in and has its meal. Now when it comes to creatures that we could get up close for the cameras that bioluminesce, there are thousands of species deep beneath the ocean waves but these glowworms are one of the few terrestrial species that we could actually get this close to. Now under the bright lights like this, these worms just kind of look like sticky boogers, but I know what you wanna really see is that bioluminescent glow. Now to capture that, we need complete darkness. We're gonna use some special techniques with our cameras to capture that. So let's turn down the lights, set that up, and see what sort of epic shots we can get. Let's do it. Capturing the true splendor of glowworms is much more difficult and time-consuming than one might think, and the process to get the following shots would take us multiple cameras and, in total, nearly 36 hours of recording time. But we managed to pull off some pretty cool shots. So without further ado, here's our most epic glowworm moments. Well, how cool is that? Exploring the hidden world of glowworms to capture the wonder of bioluminescence on camera. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild, 
We'll see you on the next adventure. For over a century, the Waitomo Caves and the Bizarre Glowing Worms have been capturing the awe and amazement of adventure seekers. When it comes to hidden worlds, this elaborate system of ancient underground caverns is a place unlike anything the Brave Wilderness team and I have ever explored. And while the lore of dragons may only truly exist in the movies, it certainly wasn't hard to imagine being perched upon the back of a winged beast, zipping and zagging through this underground world of wonder. If you love dragons and adventure, make sure to check out How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Look for it on Blu-ray, DVD, and digital. And don't forget to check out the bonus features, including a couple hosted by yours truly, where we go on an exciting journey behind the scenes to learn how the filmmakers used real-world animals to inspire and bring to life the fantasy world of dragons.